Hi, uh, I'm Aaron. I work uh, at Red Hat. I work on um, contract or, or NetFilter, OVS, uh, DPDK, um, really just, a, just about everything networking that's you know, low-level moving packets. So this talk is going to be about kind of the contract in OVS. Um, mostly I'm going to focus on the user space contract implementation that was added uh, last year um, and enhanced over the, you know, over the interim time. Um, but we'll touch on some, you know, we'll touch on the kernel data path as well. So <clears throat> this talk is about contract, how we track connections. Uh, it's about connections, which are more than just logical flows. They're actual flows. They have state. They have numbers. They have dreams. And then uh, we're actually going over kind of the, the latest. So I base this talk actually by going through the code in, uh, in master. So this, this will be like bleeding edge. So what's a connection? So a connection's a packet-based mechanism uh, that two software elements use to communicate. Um, it's different from a flow by one important thing. Uh, packets that are part of a connection, they have state. OK? These are packets. This is how I think of packets. You know, they're, uh, they, they all have some different properties. They have some numbers, like real packets do. Um, if you've been a protocol writer and you've stepped on one, uh, it hurts. So this is how I think of packets. And so this would be a flow. I say, OK, take all the red packets and put them in the red bucket. So this is like how I explain flows to my, to my kids. Take all the red packets, put them in the red, put them in the red port, we're good. By like putting away your toys? Yeah, absolutely. So contract by putting away your toys. So now I'm going to show you contract. Pay attention. The difference is subtle. They're all connected. They're, they're in order. They have some, you know, all the state has been uh, preserved. So if you look back here, we have some that, you know, have different states. There's some that don't have numbers, do have numbers that are being put in the bucket. Here, only the ones with numbers are put in that bucket. So this is a connection. All right, why is a connection important? So it represents a distinct bidirectional communication channel, synchronized TCP sessions, right? UDP flows, SIP sessions, those kind of things. So how is it stateful? Well, I mean, it has states. So these are the four main states, right? New, which is uh, the first packet of a connection. Related, which is like new, but it's for a connection that we expect to happen. Right? So like when FTP port happens, we, we know that there's a new connection that's going to be coming, and we should be expecting it. Um, established, right? Packet that's flowing as, as part of an existing connection. And then invalid. So a packet that's not part of any connection and isn't the first packet of a connection, or an unexpected packet, which is received for an existing connection. So think like two sins in a row for opening. Who uses? Who cares about contract? OpenShift cares about it. That's their network policy plugin. Um, OpenStack cares about it. Security groups are implemented using contract. So, so it's important to know about connections. It's how we can actually like allow traffic through that we want, and not allow uh, malicious traffic through. As an example, contract helpers, right? So a helper is a bit of code that tells us that packets um, for an existing connection, they tell us like a new connection is going to be coming. They, they set up expectations. Um, they make contract more useful. I mean, if all you could do is just track things by TCP uh, sequence numbers and, and syntax and all, that, that wouldn't be as useful. I mean, it would still be useful, but not as useful. Um, and in the user space, we actually have some helpers uh, added as part of OVS 2.8, um, thanks to uh, Daryl. Um, and, and we'll talk about those. So there are many contract implementations that OVS makes use of, um, three that I know of definitely. So every data path type has a contract. Windows and Linux use the Netlink interface. They use the Netlink data path. And each have their own contract. 
Linux kernel has a contract. It's been there for, you know, 26 years. Um, the Windows contract, the code is actually in the tree in that data path Windows. Um, I didn't read it, so don't ask me questions about that. Um, and, and then the NetDev data path, which I call everything else, uses the newly added user space contract. I mean, it was added in 2.6, but I think it's only just starting to really see a lot of uh, usage. So in kernel contract, it's well tested, right? Every Linux system is using it. Um, it, it it's in routers, it's in switches, it's in you know, your phones, it's in your laptops, it's, it's everywhere. It's reusable uh, for, for kernel components, meaning the open vSwitch kernel module uses the same contract as the NetFilter modules. So X, you know, any of your X tables, any like NFT, all of that. It's tunable. There's lots of parameters we can change. We can change connection timeouts. We can change you know, hash table sizes. We can set policies. You know, we can do all sorts of things. It's well supported. There's lots of tools. There's lots of documentation. Um, there's lots of talks about it. It's been covered in a lot of places. Uh, Florian Westphal did a great talk at NetDev 2.1. Uh, I recommend people watch. It's really good. Then we come to the user space contract. So, it was, it was derived from FreeBSD's contract code. Uh, it lives in the lib directory uh, as all the contract, you know, star files. Uh, it's hooked into the NetDev data path. It's only got a few helpers. You know, it's got some protocol support for ICMP, UDP, TCP, and it has FTP, and I didn't write it there, but it has TFTP as well. So, you know, we, ha we have a few things we can support. Um, there's not much tunable on it. Most of it's fixed at the moment. These are the data structures. So contract, this is, this is the per net dev contract data structure. This is the overarching data structure. You can see it's organized into like buckets. We keep track of like counts and, and limits. Um, each bucket actually contains the hash map of the connections, you know, identified by their, by their keys. Um, and it keeps expiration lists. These are per protocol expiration lists, per protocol state expiration lists. Um, the important thing to note is all these connections, everything is accessed under a lock in the NetDev uh, uh, user space contract. Um, kernel uses RCU. It's, you know, again, they're different. So, And then the construct. This is the actual, like, connection. Um, these have the keys, so forward and reverse direction, um, an expiration timer, uh, NAT information, uh, I'm not going to cover NAT too much, but it does contain some NAT information for, for doing other actions. Um, and the algorithm, you know, what, what helper it's using or what protocol it's using. This is how data paths support contract, right? It's just three functions to dump all the information. Um, it's quite useful, and, and we'll, we'll get to that. These are the contract dump commands. So kernel has a few, right? It has these contract tools. It has lots of, like, support for, for listening for events, which is a really nice feature. Um, you can use OVSDP Cuddle dump contract. That will actually dump the entire contract table, um, which is nice. You can use uh, contract-l to list the connections, dash F to flush them. It's quite useful. OVS uh, app Cuddle is how you interact with the user space um, contract. So it's the DP Cuddle dump contract. And so here is an example. I'm going to walk you through an example of using contract, right? We'll, we'll track something. So we start by priming table zero with three flows. We say, like, if there's no, if the, if the CT state is minus TRK, meaning it's never visited the contract before, and it's an IP packet, I want it to go through contract, that's that CT action, and then I, I want it to continue on table one. The next one says, if it's an ARP, just do the normal, uh, you know, ARP handling. So broadcast it out, whatever. Otherwise, just drop it. On table one, now I'm saying, okay, when there's a new packet, right, this is a new, I, I detect that this is a new connection, and its destination port is 80, and it's coming in from ETH0, 
I want to commit that, and I want to push it out vth1. Likewise, if it's established, and both, both you'll see are, are kind of the same, uh, only one parameter is, is swapped. Um, when it's established, I want you to forward them bidirectionally. That's it. So if you look, this is an illustration. So we have the sin packet come in, eth0. Contract table, we'll commit, and we'll forward it along, and it will you know, flow through vth1. In the established case, we're having synax flowing. Those are just being forwarded. So they, they visit the contract table, they refresh whatever timers, and then that's it. They, they flow in either direction. FTP, right? Everyone's favorite. So again, we have the same kind of preamble here. And, and you'll see the only thing that's really changed is we say the TCP port uh, or, or the transport destination port 21, that's the FTP protocol, um, or FTP port. That's the only change from the previous. But here, now we have new things. We say, like, if it's new, related, commit it to the contract, right? <clears throat> Otherwise, it's, again, mostly the same. If it's established, bidirectionally forwarded. So in this, right, when the FTP get command gets issued to the remote side, a port response comes back and it says, okay, TCP port 64,004. And what will happen is contract will create first uh, an expectation that a new connection will start using that five tuple. And what happens when the TCP sin to deport you know, 6404 comes in? We now have two connections. We have one, which was the original you know, control plane connection for FTP, and we have a second, which is the data connection. And if you want to dump those connections, you do something like uh, OVS app cuddle, DP cuddle dump contract, and you would see some, some, something looking like this uh, that tells you here, here are these uh, connections going. So future work for the user space. Um, I think IP fragmentation support would be uh, very useful and, and a, a good thing to have. Um, support for dynamically resizing the, the contract tables. That, that would be a, another good thing. Um, tuning connection state timeout values. These are things like the kernel data path has. Um, additional logging, and, and by that I mean like the events that kernel uh, spits out from its contract, that, that would be like useful to be able to monitor um, somehow. Um, and, and this last one here, a more extensible helper framework. Right now it's, it's kind of like fixed in place. Um, it would be really nice to use like the ability to register five tuples like from inside the code and say like, here's my protocol, you know, like SIP for instance, and here's the default, you know, tuple that you want to match against. And you know, if someone wants to use the ALG keyword and, and add it um, to a different, you know, tuple or, or continue adding it, you know, that would be good. So that's, that's what I think about, um, you know, things that I would like to see out of contract. All right, questions? Any, any questions? Uh, come on up uh, uh, to one of the microphones. Justin, do you have a question? Yeah. I, I guess I just had two comments. Uh, one was the you had shown the ways to dump the connection tracking table, and um, you showed one set for the kernel and then a different one from user space. Mm -hmm. The one for user space should actually work with the kernel one as well, so the OVS app kettle command. Yeah, so you can specify the data path you want to go to. So I, I believe, yeah, you can, you can say, like, flush that as well. Sure. Yeah, yeah. My point yeah. was just that um, if you want something that's consistent, like if you're scripting it, you can always use the OVS app kettle command uh, regardless True. of the data path. Yeah. And then the other thing in terms of the features that you said were going to be added, um, we're looking at adding per zone connection limits as well to the kernel. And then, yeah, obviously we'd want that for user space. Um, so that'll be help helpful for things like OVN where you're creating different um, virtual ACL tables. And then you can, um, so that one one tenant can't fill up the the resources of another. Yeah.
I think an earlier talk mentioned performance degradation with contract. Has that ever been studied? Um, um, so performance degradation with contract, how? Um, if I remember that Red Hat slide, it had starting with seven megabits, and then they went at 100K flows. They said it led to like a 30% degradation. Hmm. So, and this is with the user space contract? They're nodding their heads, yeah. So with the user space contract, like I said at the beginning, so it is, all the connections are, are protected by like locks. So if, if everything winds up in like the same bucket or, or is like reusing this bucket a lot, then the, um, the threads that are accessing contract will, will serialize on that. And maybe that's an effect, I don't know. I, I can't comment on performance. Okay, and another question I had was, so let's say there's a rule which commits a connection and that rule goes away. Is there a way to remove that connection? So there is a, there's a flush command if you want to flush them all, but there's actually a, a timer or, or there's like timers that are running um, these expiration lists. And so eventually the, the connection will expire. But these um, can be really long, right? Um, so what I meant is- Yes, yeah. yes, mm -hmm. they can be, yep. Okay, so there's no- like, There's no nothing tunable for I, that. I earlier allowed this, now I don't want to allow this, but all your reverse traffic is still flowing through. So uh, we, we actually do have uh, features that allow that to be constructed as part of the yeah, flow table. It's not yeah. built into the mechanism. Hi, Alan. That was a great talk, especially that a user space contract, and that's fascinating. Um, my question is that, is that a... Is that a contract module used by DPDK? Yes, what that's the contract that's used by DPDK. OK, then next question is, you mentioned about the IP fragmentation is not there in the user space. Somebody can provide some timeline or time frame about the fragmentation support in the user space? Well, I mean, everyone has access to the code and the mailing list. So <laughs> if it's a priority. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Justin, I know that feature has come up at, at VMware, too. Do, do we have anyone uh, planning to work on it? I think it will. I, I'm sure it's going to um, come before too long. There's been some discussion about who should do it. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's something that's high on our to-do list. Awesome. Thank you. Do we have any other questions? All right, then. Uh, Finn Ack. <laughs> 